And welcome to another edition of Woodsy's Club <laughs> Tour. And good mate of mine today, Mitchell Pierce. How you going, mate? Woodsy, thanks for having me on. No, nah, I appreciate you coming. I've only asked you about seven times. But how you going, mate? <laughs> well, I've run out. I've done that many podcasts <laughs> since I got back and obviously doing the footy talk. I'm sick of talking about my career, to be honest. So, but... so what's happening? What, what are you doing now with yourself, mate? Mate, I am obviously doing a bit of stuff here with the footy talk, uh, with Toddy, my old mate Toddy, which I'm really enjoying. Yep. Um, doing some rooster stuff, actually a bit of academy. Oh, yeah. So I just started getting back into doing a couple of days a week there with the their academy squad, all their best young halves, which I'm enjoying. And other so, than that, so how many relaxing. times? How many times a week do you do that? It's normally once once a week, sometimes twice a week. Yeah. Obviously, the more relationship I build with some of the the good halves coming through there. Um, and how old would those blokes be? So there, there's Toby Rodwell's one of the standouts. He yep. played in the 18s New, Th- New South Wales this year. Um, Really quality player. They're looking at him for the next couple of years. Yep. Uh, and there's a couple of other kids there as well uh, that are in the squad. And then obviously a fair few middles and outside backs. But they, so Mitch Orbison's basically put, he, he approached the club a couple of years ago. Yep. Um, he just saw junior development and sort of the lack of coaching or um, attention to sort of your best juniors. So he basically wanted to, to set up an academy to, to give extra attention to their best players and give them the best chance to, to kick through. So I think Orbo, well, Mitch Orbo was a big, big, big push behind that. Yep. And obviously Nick jumped on board. And uh, when I was away, Nick was always really good about uh, coming back if I wanted to. And I yep. uh, spoke with, with Mitch, so I'm enjoying it. It's been good. Is it just yourself and Mitch doing it, Orbo? Jake Friend's there as well. Oh, okay. So Friendy's doing a fair bit of, um, so he does. So it's basically Mitch and Jake doing a lot of it. Yep. Uh, they've been doing it for a couple of years. And then uh, they've got me back just to help out with the halves. And, so. and you spoke about you kept in contact with Nick when you were overseas. Did they ever, because there's a lot of talk, PC back for number 14, the utility off the bench. Yeah. Was there, was there any chance of that happening? There was a, there was an option there. So when I left, uh, obviously under the circumstances, when everything went down, I chose to, to leave uh, at that time. And I think I've heard from a few people close to it since I think that Roosters did genuinely want me to stay. Yeah. Obviously I was going to be playing a different role and, Coops only ended up playing a couple of years. Yeah. So if I had a stayed, I'd say I would have played, you know, a good few years after that, uh, if I had a s- chose to stay. But when I did leave, my relationship with Nick was still pretty solid. And yep. uh, I, I was honest about where I was at at the time. I, I, I spoke about that a few times since I've retired and, and in different podcasts. Uh, but I think one thing about the Roosters is, and I can't say this about every club, but one thing about the Roosters is if you've, if you've been a good servant there and, and they, and they yep. respect you, they are really loyal and they look after you. And, even when I left, Nick sort of followed me closely. He'd always, you know, reach out every now and then. And, um, yeah, he's always been rock solid with me. So to come back there, you know, it feels like home back, being back there as well. Yeah. When you go away and you experience sort of new things and different cultures, obviously being overseas at Newcastle, you know, I come back and it's a lot of my old mates there. And yeah. So it's enjoyable. Well, something for me is when I, when I speak of Mitchell Pierce, I always think the Roosters. Yeah. It's not like myself. Speaking of Aaron Woods, got five bloody clubs. So. <laughs> How many yeah. you had now? <laughs> looking for a six. <laughs> So you can't forget your 18 test matches. Ah, oh, mate, you're doing your best. Come <laughs> on, mate. That's, just, that's a little bit down there. Yeah. That's yesterday's yeah. hero, I'll mate. I'll tell you what, though. The Tigers kept you, <laughs> Teddy, <laughs> Mitch, Rooksy. Let's just... There's quite a few out there. Mate. Could have been anything, but it wasn't. They're going for a similar thing at the moment. Um, mate, one thing I'd love to know, right? So you doing this junior development pathways with the young blokes. Yep. Do they realize that you play first grade at 17? Like you were in the system for... A, a, like you were playing first grade at the, at the period they are now that they're learning off you. They might after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of people, mate, you yeah. feel like you've been around forever, but mate, yeah. you've, you've done a great career if you go over it. Like yeah. these kids have got one of the great, you know, leads. yeah, you've had your, your problems off field, but what the knowledge you could give these young kids of, of what to do on the field, you know, what not to do, how to prepare yourself. Yeah. I think it's a great move from the Chooks, mate. Thanks, Woody. Yeah, I, I really enjoy, I've always enjoyed helping people, you know, uh, in my nature, even when I played, I, I used to love to try to look after the younger boys and, um, it's just what we do, right? I, I, you know, I know you're the same and, uh, I've always taken pride in, in giving back. You know, when I came through, my biggest development came through, through older mentors, yeah. guys I looked up to, you know, the Joey's, Matty Johns's, um, even other guys that I play with, you know, you got Freddie and Braith, all these guys, when I was coming through are guys, I just hang off every word. You know, I think guys that have had good careers and, and good character, you you grow up to, to respect your elders and that's yeah. how we, that's how you learn. It's the fastest way to learn. It's, it's, it's life. It's, it's how, it's how you should be approaching things. Right. And, um, so I've got an opportunity now to pass on as much knowledge as I can. Yeah. And I enjoy seeing them grow. I've only been in there for 
a few weeks, but you build a little bit of rapport. And um, these boys, especially the ones I'm working with, there's a big opportunity there with with the half halves opportunities at the yep. Roosters. There's a big opportunity for them to kick through, and hopefully they can play a little part in that. And you spoke about Freddie and, and, and Bray. Did you, were you did you play with Freddie? Nah, I, actually, I played with Freddie in the in the nines comp. Yep. So that was. So How was that? Was that surreal? Was that like a bit surreal watch, playing with a bloke that you've watched your whole career growing up? Yeah. Well, so when I first started full time training, so I yep. came back when I, before I debuted when I was only a kid. Freddie was he just retired in '05, so yep. he had a year off. Then he came back as a consultant, basically halves assistant coach. He wasn't really full time, but he would come in and he'd run the water on game day and that. So, so my first trial games and, and NRL games, I had Freddie behind me telling me to kick the forty twenty, do this. So I had a pretty good pretty good eyes and vision yep. behind me running behind the line. So I, I had a good relationship from, with Freddie from, from an early age. Yep. Um, and then obviously he coached me in 2008, uh, back into 2007, he took over from Chris Anderson and yep. in 2008, um, he was our head coach. So good success under him. And then, so when he retired, he came back, Nick obviously got him back to playing the nines as a bit of a marketing sort of yep. thing. I room with Freddie there. <laughs> so we had about three or four days together. Um, Did you just pick his brain? Like just... Yeah, like the the best thing Freddie, the influence Freddie had on me, I remember from those early days, like, and now I get older, you appreciate it even more because when you have a mentor like that, you think that's just normal. Yeah. But you realize as you get older, not everyone's that nice. <laughs> <laughs> not really, do you? Well, not everyone's that good a, good a, good a leader, good a mentor. Yeah. You know, Joey and Maddie, I could say the same thing about, but I used to have heaps of chats with Freddie. You know, he obviously, you know, I was coming into first grade, I was a young half, he, he, he obviously knew, uh, the, the, the foot, the footsteps that I was taking, um, and he could relate to it. And he, well, he used to have mad chats with me at night, you know, midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday night, and just call me about life and yep. what I had for dinner. And I see <laughs> as I get older now what he was doing, you know, and, um, you know, those things are priceless. Hey, talk to us about Matty and Joey. What sort of an influence did they have on your career? Yeah, they were huge. Um, Joey, I had, I've told this story a few times. So the year I debuted, um, I got injured. Yep. 2007, I played about 16 games. Back end of the year, I got injured. How old are you at this stage? I was just, I would have turned into 18, so wow. April birthday. So yep. I debuted 17 and then, so this was probably, yeah, just a bit after being 18. Yep. Um, so luckily I was 18. Goes into the story. <laughs> so I went up, so I got a message from Joey. He'd been supporting me in the paper, giving me a few compliments and this type of thing. And he was my hero. So yep. it makes you feel good, right? I was doing recovery with Mini, Anthony Minicello, who was injured at the time. He was our captain. Um, and he was good mates with Joey. Yep. So I was in the pool session. I got out of the pool and I got to check my phone and it said, give me a ring cowboy. It's Joey. I didn't know any other Joey's. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to mini like a little school kid, which I still was. And I said, mate, is that Andrew Johns? He goes, yeah, yeah. Joey asked me for your number. Give him a ring. Anyway, called Joey. He's on a vendor in, in Newcastle. He just retired. Did his, with the neck yep, problems. Yep. So I get it. Called Joey. He goes, what are you doing this weekend, mate? It was a Friday afternoon. So what are you doing this weekend? Come up to mine, stay at my house. We'll go to the park, have some fun and connect. So I was like a little kid, hung up the phone. I said, Minnie, and Minnie goes, call the coach, Chris Anderson. I'll speak to him as well. I'll take you up there. We'll have a weekend and yeah. come back. So about two hours later, I went home, packed my staff, called mum and dad. I'm going to Joey's house. <laughs> Minnie met me at, at, on the highway, on the road up there. And I went up and met Joey uh, at the Burwood, yep. which was his local pub and um, yeah, anyway, ended up, fast, cut a long story short, stayed at his house. We didn't get to the park, <laughs> went out in the piss all night. But I remember I tell, told all my mates for years, I went back to his man cave and I remember just sitting there for hours talking to Joey, just, just the three of us, me, him and yep. me, uh, talking about footy and ball playing, just picking his brain. And like for a 17, 18 year old kid to be standing there with his hero at the cusp of your, at the start of your NRL career, you know, I, that sort of stuff, you, you can never replace that. Yeah. Um, and that inspired me, you know, even more after that. And we, we built a good relationship. Maddie was pretty similar. Um, Maddie was supporting me from a similar age. Used to go down to Maddie's place down at Collaroy a fair bit and um, just, you know, go for an hour at a time and just do skills, basic skills and starting points and all the basics. And, and he was the same, you know, he'd, he'd follow up with phone calls and so just genuinely the, supporting you. So was he just really big on fundamentals? You hear a lot of stories from Maddie gets like, you know, the Melbourne Storm the trio used to come down to his house. They had Munster. Yep. You now he's done a lot of work with the Tigers boys. I know he's yep. done a lot with Mitchell and, and, and Luke. Yep. What, like, what does he go through? Does he just pick your brain? Like you said, his starting points, what are the starting points that he looks at? Yeah. A lot of Maddie's stuff was, was, uh, yeah, yeah. Basic starting points. It's sort of what I'm passing on with the, with the kids that I'm working yep. with now and all the stuff that I learned. I think as a half, when you go through your whole career and as you know, being the elite player, you, you used to allow yourself, but 
the game comes off basics, right? And and the thing that I got taught from a from a young age, and now I try and pass it on, is it's just the basics of of your starting points, of of how you catch the ball, um, keeping your body square, like all those things. All the messages I got from all the greatest players was all all very consistent, and it was all around repetition and basics. So yeah. a lot of the stuff I'd go over with with Joey and Maddie, and and that was around that sort of stuff. It was very simple stuff, but uh, stuff I took through my whole career. Take us back to the man cave with Joey. Yeah. Did it like? Nothing to do with the piss, but did it surprise you how much of a footy nut he was? Yeah. Like, did you think, like, Joey, or just like, you see this, one of the greatest players ever played a game. Did you think it just come natural to him, or did you realize how much he actually invests in the rugby league? Yeah, just just the, his knowledge. Obviously, I grew up really curious as well. Like, as a half, I latched onto, you know, your Joeys and that. Because from 13, 14, 15, I just studied how they moved. And, yep. you know, that's, as a young and up-and-coming player, you just, you latch onto your heroes. But then when I finally met Joey, not, not only just his knowledge on football, but the history of the game, uh, music, uh, all topics, and, and you know them yourself yep. well. They're, they're so worldly and, and educated, and, and the respect they had for the history of the game is what made them such great players. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love watching them. Mate, talk to us. 17, you're in the Rooster system. You get the call. You're playing your first grade debut. Who, who, who did you find out from that you are playing first grade? Um, so Chris Anderson was the coach. Yep. Um, I came in, I came back from, from the schoolboys tour the year before. Um, I played really well in the Australian schoolboys. I was captain. Well, and, and I, got, I know that side. You want to tell the people at home who was in that team? Like that's one of the yeah. best teams I've ever seen. Who do we have? We had, oh, the name of Izzy Falau. Um, Chris Lawrence. Chris Lawrence. Chrissy Sando was the, the, was the gun at that age. Oh, really? Um, Dave Taylor was in there. Mitch Orbison. No, Mitch Orbison was here before. No, Foz was, he was a year younger than me at school. Oh, okay, yep. So Kieran came in the year after, but yeah, no, we had a hell of a team. Um, yeah, we went over there undefeated, but that was a real confidence boost for me. Yep. Obviously, you know, you're coming through the juniors. I, play, I actually played Australian schoolboys the year before. Oh, okay. So I played when I was 16, but I was, oh, wow. played a couple of years up. So Jesus, that was pretty that's impressive. that's huge. Yeah. So I played the year before. I finished school in 17. So yep. That, so I was, yeah, I was seven, the same, yeah. Yeah, yep. so I played 16 and then the year in 17. So I went away and captained them. So I came back with confidence. Yep. I'd already been playing Jersey Flag at the Roosters that year uh, when I went away. But uh, Chris Anderson said when I come back, he'll chuck me into full-time squad. And yep. I just tried to attack it with everything I had, trying to earn the boys' respect. Um, Jamie Soward was there. He got the nod. He'd been playing first grade for a couple of years. Yep. Um, they had a bad loss the first game. And then I got the call. So, and it was, I remember at the time, it was a lot of the senior players were back at me. Fitzy was there, Craig Fitzgibbon, Braith yep. was there, Mini. Jeez, that, that's a good crew to have behind you. Yeah, there was a lot of good, strong senior boys there that had come off like they were from those Roosters days. Yep. So, you know, to get their trust and respect, uh, it gives you confidence. And um, yeah, so I got that debut. We got flogged the first game against the Cowboys up there playing Thurston and Matty Bowen when they were on fire. But I, you know, just like in your debut. What you just, year was this? I was in 2007. I think I played the Aussie Schoolboys game before you there. Did you? Yeah, I remember seeing you there because we had the relationship through Roach. <laughs> yeah, of course. Liam yeah, Roach, yeah, Blocker yeah. Roach's son. Yeah. And I think, did Thurston yeah. or Matty Bowen score a hat trick that night? Oh, we got pumped. Right. They, they, were, were, they were on fire. Yeah. I remember watching that game. I was like, if it's going to be this hard, I'm done. But <laughs> And what did you do? So obviously we know, hey, we know about the history of your old man, like yeah. Wayne. Was he the first bloke you rang or was it your mother? When you um, found out you're going to be playing first grade? Mate, to be honest, I should know this, but I can't remember the exact. But <laughs> whenever I call my mum or dad around footy, they're normally next to each other. Oh, okay. They're, they're pretty proud. Um, but yeah, they were, yeah, like, as you know as well, when you make your debut, there's, there's things you go through your career in life. I haven't ca had children yet, but I'm yep. sure that's the top of the tree. Yeah, you get married and all these sort of things. But your debut is one of the top top 10 that you can always, oh, I think yeah. till the day you die, it's one of those things you'll always remember with the life we live. So yeah, I was just so excited. It was everything I ever dreamt of. Um, and it, and it came so early. I didn't expect it to come that early. Yep. I was always ambitious, but yeah, it came pretty fast and, uh, didn't miss too many games after that, except I got a few injuries at the back end of that year. But then after that, I had a pretty dream run. Oh, did you? What? You never got injured. You were like superhuman, mate. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us about the influence of the old man. Obviously played... You know, one of the greatest Balmain Tiger players to play the game, captain of the club, everyone around like. I grew up right down, literally next door to the stadium. How big of an influence was he for in your career? Yeah, I'll speak about dad, probably more now I'm retired because people don't, you know, you're in the middle of a middle of your career. But I think with age as well, um, I owe my dad everything. Um, just his leadership, his example. You get older and you see different dynamics with, 
lots of your friends in different situations. You know, I was, I was grateful I had two parents and I was grateful that my father set an example and, um, he never, never pushed me to my dad. If I didn't play footy and I was playing, I was a, whatever I did, he'd still have my back no matter what. Um, so he's never pushy, which has probably made me grow, uh, in my own way, but, uh, whatever I need him, he's there for me and he, and he's an ultimate leader. So yeah, I can't thank him enough. Did, did he ever want you to go to the Tigers, mate? He never says it. Like, <laughs> I'm sure there'd be a part of him. Yeah. I, to be honest, I, I reckon he was probably happy I didn't. I played in the, the Balmain Juniors when I was younger and then moved clubs. Yep. So it wasn't as if I was there all the time in the system. Um, and I think dad, he probably, there was probably a part of him that was happy I didn't because it would have been a lot of pressure oh, it <laughs> with that name there and, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, he didn't, he's never said that. I think last year there was a bit of talk about the Tigers reaching out <laughs> And obviously at the back end of my career when I was in France. Yes. Um, and I could see there was a little bit of excitement. He's probably thinking, oh, I'm older. There's not too much to Come lose. Come on, Mitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't this get your last point. chance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the uncles and, and the rest of the family, obviously everyone's from Balmain. So oh, a lot, mate, of, them, a lot of them would have been happy. They would have come out of the woodwork. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More Bay would be loving it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, so back to the Roosters, obviously it's such a, like a, the club's like absolutely phenomenal. Like it's one of the biggest clubs in, in Australia. Yep. What about the plays you had there at that, you know, those times? You mentioned before, you leave your group, and Asta, you know, Fitzgibbon. Then you signed the likes of O'Mealy, Willie Mason. Like, what, what was it like going to train every day? Like, I said it to you before about hanging out with Joey Johns, but yeah. this time you're actually training with these blokes day in, day out, and then you get to play with them. Yeah, and all those guys you just said, are, are, are some of my good friends out of footy now that the career is fast-forwarded. But at that age, I was really lucky that I came through with a really strong leadership group. Like, Craig Fitzgibbon was was one of the best to come through with. He was the captain, uh, along with Braith at the time. Um, Minnie was one of my favorites all time to play with. Yeah. Played a lot of footy with Minnie. Obviously, 13, he was still around. A lot of those older guys had sort of finished in the early days. Marco Miller, you mentioned. Like, I loved Oga. Like, as an 18-year-old, I used to go to his house a fair bit. You know, uh, him and his family going down there, staying over for the night, drinking beers. Like, where, where, where would Oga live? Was he he was down those? in Cronulla at the oh, time. Okay, yep. um, but he was just really good with all the younger boys. Yep. And at that age, that's... As you can vouch for, those older players give you confidence, don't yeah. they? So I had a real strong, and they, were, they had stories for days. Those boys, well, like, come on, give us something, <laughs> give, give us something on on Willie. Nah, come on. Willie, oh, Willie's just. <laughs> and tell you, half of his stuff's not true. Can, can you tell me the story that you told me about him about how much crap he talks? <laughs> I remember a mate said to me once. He just started laughing. I think we were in Bali. He started laughing, and he said, "I said, what are you laughing at?" He said, "I tell that many lies. I don't even know what the truth is anymore." <laughs> <laughs> he probably wouldn't even remember oh, saying it. Oh, but uh, it? yeah, like I loved Mace. Like but all those boys coming through. Um, <laughs> like in 2008, we had a mad team. Yeah. Uh, we got knocked out in the second finals against the Broncos. Um, I played Origin that year. So like, but I was just playing behind a great pack. I yep. had Braith outside me, Mini out the back. And then like our pack was Ogre, Mace, Fitzy. Just all these old school, like hard players that are like all legends and, and played rep footy. So, and they all looked after you. That's what, that's it. That's yeah. the thing you look back, you remember the most. They, they show you the ropes. Oh, do they what, mate? And they were just battle hardened. Like yeah. their good game was like their bad game. Yeah. You never had a down game against the Roosters. And, and that yeah. was something that when you go up against them, it's going to be tough every week. Yeah. Um, speak to us about 2013. Like what was so, did, did you, did you feel that, it was going to be a successful year at the start with the, with the likes of the players that you signed at the start of the season. Um, I was, yeah, well, I think the thing was, there was a lot of pressure yep. to, to get results. So I knew we were going to be there, thereabouts. <clears throat> Sorry, mate. I knew we were going to be thereabouts. Um, I think, so Sonny, Jenko and Luke O'Donnell signed late. Was it Jimmy Maloney? As Jimmy well? Maloney, but he'd signed. So we knew Jimmy was coming. Yep. So I knew we'd have more, su we we're going to have some good success getting yep. Jimmy on board. Um, but yeah, there was talk around Sonny and that when the media started to flare up a little bit, but I think just, I think Sonny was in Japan yep. and then he came back late. Um, so there's all this anticipation. Luke O'Donnell ended up signing late um, and then Jenko came across from Penrith late. Yep. So we knew we had a good squad and then Robbo obviously changed all these systems. Was that Robbo's first year as coach? That was his first year. Wow. Yeah. So there was a buzz, you know, and you know what it's like when you're in those teams, um, you could feel an energy shift. We'd had a poor year the year before. Yep. There was all the Brian Smith changeover. Robbo came in. Um, so yeah, there was just, there was, there was excitement and we knew we were going to go well, but then obviously when Sonny walks in the door and then we're talking, Jenko at the time, when, when did you first find out Sonny was coming? I, I can't remember the day or the date. Like just the <laughs> feeling, like the feeling of the, yeah, I remember just being that excited. Just obviously 
you know, Sonny was, you talk about the other players before, but Sonny was that guy that was the, the pinup boy for all of us, wasn't yeah. he? You know, the, the superstar at the time, uh, we all looked up to him, especially that crew. We're all only sort of 22, 23, 24 yeah. majority of us. So, you know, you get a guy like Sonny Bill Williams on board. It was probably similar. <laughs> Not good for me when Coop's signed, you know, mm. the excitement is you're getting a superstar, you're getting a legend. So when Sonny walked in, um, yeah, he just, his influence was, was unmatched. Just his, just the way he trained, his, his energy. Like I had a really good relationship with Sonny um, as a guy. I connected with him really well. I was on his edge in defense. You yep. know what it's like in those yeah. sort of That's uh, your gang. situations. He yeah. was my gang. And he took, you know, I used to go to yoga with him and all these things. And, and I just used to hang off his, whatever he said, you know. <laughs> yeah, mate. And uh, the way he trained. So we, we all, um, we really followed him that year. Um, well, but it was you, a really clean year. Well, like about, about you say the way he trained, how did he train? Like it just, it was, just, it was just his attention to detail with his yep. stuff. Obviously Sonny was, was a non-drinker, um, obviously, obviously spirituality, um, just all these, his lifestyle choices, the way he ate. So that year we had, it wasn't just Sonny in the fact that, that made change for the diet. Mini was a real, yep. he transformed his life, Mini. Yeah, he, did, he was yeah. our captain and he went through all these problems with his back. So yeah, like you had Minnie there and Sonny. We had a, a really good dietitian guy there at the time, uh, Keegan Smith. Oh, yep, yep. Keegan, Brian yep. Smith's son, yep. actually. So he changed our whole programs around diet. So just everything the boys were talking about was was diet and, and health and well-being. Yep. So the whole energy was a bit just, different to what was happening at Chook's previous years. The last couple of years, we probably had a bit of a loose culture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I think, yeah, those, those guys' influences were massive and, um, yeah, you look back at the end of your career, at the opportunities to play with those guys, and you, you'd have plenty of them yourself. Yep. It's it's their stories for days. And talk about the lead up to the thirteen grand final was that was sort of you knocked South out, was it, to get into the GF? South to get minor premiers, minor premiers, and then we beat Manly in probably the hardest game I've ever played. It was four nil. Yes. <laughs> so Manly I, I had to do it the hard way. We got the week off and played Newcastle to yep. get into the grand final, and Manly um, they had to do it the hard way and play all the way through. That 4-0 game we played against Manly was probably one of the hardest games I've ever played. Yep. Like if you think about a 4-0 game, you think it would just be terrible skills, this type of thing. But the, the amount of footy that was played was crazy. Yeah, they had Cherry and Kieran there at the time and yep. all the, the Stewart boys and everyone. And we had it, the side we had. I remember that game, like the defense of both teams was that good. It was, it was a 4-0 game. It was well, off a kick. Roger Tuivasa really? scored off Jimmy's grubber. Wow. And that was the only try score, but the amount of possession was like at 80%. So it was one of those teams, higher balling play games. Just crazy, like standard. So we knew the grand final was going to be a tough one yep. um, coming off that game. And every time we played Manly, Manly Roosters that year in that era, was, they were like the, the toughest games. Yep. And then, yeah, the grand final, we had to we had to fight back. We were losing. I think we were down by about 10 points. But was the grand final the one where Boyd Corner had just come back from a Cindy? Yeah, Boyd, he did say he was like heroic. That was a mad story. Of that year, Boydie came. I think he missed about nine games. Yep. And then came back for the grand final, underdone. But you know what Boyd's like. Right, he's he's just, one of the toughest humans you'll ever meet. Just had a huge game himself. And yeah, it was just, how good is it? Like talking about <laughs> when you win a comp. I wouldn't you know. talk about it for days. <laughs> Best ever. <laughs> talk about but it for years. Did, did you know, did you, but like going to that game, did you feel any different to 2010? Obviously. Heaps different. Yep. Um, that's the thing. If I have one regret in my football, I've had, had a few, but it, one regret about missing a big moment. Like 2010, I wish we had our time again because we were really young. And I, th I honestly thought because of the success we had and you're coming through the juniors and 08, we had a really good year. And then 2010, it popped up. You sort of think it's going to happen yeah. a lot. Um, and we had such a dream run. Toddy got uh, Dally M that year. Me and him had a really good combination. We're playing a bit of a different style to a lot of teams, just yeah. playing this all-out attack. Like and, flat fast, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just all like, – we were just throwing 20-meter cutouts and we just – We'll just, yeah, it was a really enjoyable style of footy. Yep. But we're running, we sort of built this big momentum and, and ran teams off the park. Dragons were this like stable Melbourne type team. Steely defense. Steely, had Wayne Bennett there. Mm. Really hard to crack. Yep. Um, but I remember going into that grand final. I just, the feeling from 13 was like the origin games yep. where it's like the intensity. 2010 was the same, but I just, I just, in my head, I, I, I don't know. I just had a different. At the time, I was just approaching it how yep. it was at the time. But I look back and I was like, I wish I seized that moment a bit more. I gave it 100% and yeah. we were prepared. But I just, I reckon if I had that thought, like this may never come again, yeah, it, it just might have been a bit different. Can I ask you about one in particular moment at the grand final? Brett Morris goes yeah. out. Like, fair income in a grand <laughs> final, how do you miss that, eh? Like, I know. 
But and like you said, they're just moments that you yeah. miss. But right. anyway, so yeah. you've had one negative. So now you're going into the 13 grand final. As you said, Boydie's come back off a long injury. You were down at half time, weren't you, against Manly? You had to fight back. I think just after half time, we started really poor. Yeah. <clears throat> so we had, I think we might have been down by two points, or it was a close, close at half time. We might have been up by two. Okay. I can't remember exactly, but yep. just after half time, we had a real poor start, gave away a few penalties. Yep. Boys were falling off tackles. It was one of them shaky sort of 10, 15 minute period and, and Manly piled on a couple of points. Yep. We're down by about 10, you know, so it made the, the win even better in hindsight because our ability to come back, I know Sonny sort of took big control that second half, came up with a couple of big line breaks. Um, we targeted the Wolfman, I remember, and on that edge and, and man, Jimmy just kept kicking to him. You, know, you know what's funny? I, I always talk to Brett Stewart about it training. Maybe still feel And he goes, <laughs> mate, he goes, they're going to kick the Daniel Tupo. Yeah. Just tackle the effing bastard in the air every time. Yeah. And I think Toop scored the first try. Toops He's just watched him and gone like that. Like, it just still yeah. haunts Brett, Brett Stewart. So. They do. Those big losses haunt you. never get over it, do you? <laughs> Mate, it's... But, um, but yeah, we, we got some errors out of the Wolfman there. And, um, and then, yeah, the boys just... Yeah, it was just one of those things. Jenko's try was the most memorable, that, that last minute. That was the one when we knew... Was that just, just in from the dead ball line? Just in. So Jimmy's gone across, put this beautiful kick in. Jenko gets there. Only he can do those yep. sort of plays. There's not many players that had that instinct and, and speed that I've ever played with the, the moments he used to come up with. Um, but I remember when he scored that one, it was like three, four minutes to go. Eight point lead. It's when you start to know like, fuck, we've done this. Yeah. And um, I remember the scrum. I remember it for the day I die. It was a minute to go. We knew we'd won. So they, they weren't going to score. Even if they had a score, the, the game was over. Yep. I'm looking at the boys at the scrum, Jared, Boyd, like just bawling their eyes out. And everyone, like you just know what's ahead. You know the emotions and all the euphoria you're about to experience. Yep. Um, and you, you, it's the best moments of your life, those. How, how was it afterwards? Like what what's, did you stay at the, at the ground for a long period of time? Did you go back to, where did you go and enjoy it? So we went went back to the Leagues Club. Um, and then we actually went into one of John Ibram's clubs. Uh, the tunnel, remember oh, the yep. tunnel? Yeah, the tunnel, the yep. So we all went in there. Uh, someone got hold of John and he opened it up for us. <laughs> so we didn't get out of there till about midday. Then we had the fan day and it's just a it's couple just... of days, no sleep. <laughs> but, but like, you know how a lot of people say they can't remember many times and have a good time? This is probably one that you definitely do remember. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I remember the, the moment straight after the game. Um, I ran into my little cousins, actually. Uh, my mum's sister and the two girls, Jess and Ash, yep. they were only young um, at the time. They jumped the fence with me and oh, yeah. so they've done the full lap of honour. They tell all their friends about that. Uh, and then going in the sheds and then just, I remember meeting mum and dad and just crying for like 15, 20 minutes. Yep. It was it was a real relief for me because uh, obviously we'd played in a few origin at that point. Uh, 2010, we fell short. Yep. Um, 13 was tough too. 13 was, was like a... Yeah, 13 Origin Series was, that tough. was tough. It was a tough one to lose. So to go into that uh, and just get that feeling of just like, we did it. Yeah. It just, there's no better feeling than that relief. Right. And, and you speak about Origin. How old were you when you made your debut for Origin? 19. Do, do you look back now and go, I wasn't ready for that? It was all very quick. Yep. Um, and I've said that a few times since I've retired. It's it, I think when you retire and, and hindsight, it's a, it's a beautiful perspective. Yep. Cause you see things without the emotion of, of footy pressure and, and, and sort of keeping things in. Um, I've said it a few times now that I, I probably would have, if I had a debut a bit later, would have been able to learn my trade a little bit longer, get a bit more, I suppose, confidence in your own game, um, without having to do it off losses and yep. repeat pressure. Uh, but at the same time, look, I, I got those opportunities that some players don't get. And I was really, some of the early days, I played some really good footy. Yeah. Like now I've, as I said, retired and I watch back. I don't watch all my old games too often, but if, if different origin games come up and like I said, you're without the emotion of, of, of being a player, there were some games there. I played some really good footy and yeah. I obviously played a lot of footy there. So there was lots of stuff that I did that, um, was regarded as an origin player and, um, I was really happy with with a lot of footy. There were so many series that we were involved yep. in that were a moment a moment or two away from winning the series. Well, well that's what I was going to say. Like you look back now and you see some of the plays you came up against. Like yeah. look at the Queensland spine at your probably first origin it was Smith, yeah, um, Slater, yep. Thurston, Lockyer. Yeah. Then they sub out Lockyer and bring in Cronk. Like fair dinkum. Yeah. Mate, they were good, and I've said it as well. I'm the first to admit it. In big moments, they were better than me. Yeah. 
at the, in not big, just you, us as a squad, but yeah. as a half, I take I take responsibility for that. And there was moments there um, where they just, you know, they iced the moment better than than I did or we did as a team, and it cost us in the end. But it is good looking back in history because there was so many series. 2011 stands out for me. 17, 15, oh, so, like mate, I still get nightmares. Out of I 17. do. <laughs> This is me venting. <laughs> I'm with you, brother. <laughs> we need a vent together, brother. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, honestly the how, you can't beat Origin though, can you? And the, like, the can feeling. I, say, I went to the game the other day, Woodsy, and watched it from a spectator. Obviously, I've been overseas, and then to come back and like just watching it when they ran out, I almost had a bit of emotion. Can I say? Do you miss it? I miss. I don't miss playing because it looks like my body's like I was. I'm, I've let it go. Yep. But the, the feeling the other day, I was like, not envious, but it brought brought a lot of emotion watching the boys run out because I knew what it felt like yeah. when we were there so many times. And you can't replicate that feeling. Like the build up, like looking at everyone you're playing with, you, your brother's running out there and that you know what everyone else is playing for. You're looking at everyone else's story. I'm looking at what you're playing for. Yeah. Um, the coach gives you the speech and that feeling, like there is nothing like it. Uh, and that's why you get the, the performances you do in those origins. Like, the intensity and the phys- physicality, as we know, it's it's not matched, and it's just because of the everything that goes into it. I miss that. It, it's crazy <laughs> the camaraderie, yeah. like the dressing. You know, one thing that I don't know if you remember, but I mate, I remember it clear as day. Yeah, I was 18th man, and and I was just hanging, I was just hanging off you and Toddy. Like, <laughs> it was like I just couldn't believe I was in the room with you guys together. I was I was 21. I was like, mate, I'm yeah. bringing my mates. Let's go, mate, I'm hanging out with these two. Like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> And just like to create a mateship and then like yeah. to play with you a couple of years later, like to say I've played, like it was just, yeah. mate, it's honestly, it's incredible. You don't give yeah. yourself enough credit for Thanks. what you've done in the game, mate. It's outstanding. 2019. I love to play with you too, mate. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> 20, but it. Just before you say that, it is special though. Like there's a bond when you have in those big games that you, even if you, you, you're disappointed after losses and that, but when you play with guys in that arena, yeah. there's, there's something different in it. Well, you sweat, you, you, you tear blood for each other. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's a hard sport, man. <laughs> Let's get one more game. <laughs> <laughs> one more, please. One more. 2019, <clears throat> to get selected in that game three. Yeah. Like what does Mitchell Pierce, is this like a, I can get over this, this little speed bump in my career if I can get the win tonight. That's what it felt. You just summed it up. That's what it felt like. I was playing really good footy in Newcastle. I had about six man of the matches in a row. Um, I was just in this real, I was in the flow. You know what it's, you just feel like, I felt unstoppable to be yeah. honest. And um, it was probably the best footy I've, I've played uh, in the circumstances and, and the way the team was going uh, up there. So I got injured the first game. Yep. Um, but it was one of those things that, you know, without being too deep, was like it was meant to be. Yep. Uh, like it, because I, I sort of missed the first game, the second game came around, and then it just kept coming back. Yeah. When I, when I got that call <clears throat> for the third game, I was just like, "This is meant to be." Like, yeah. Freddie called me, and I'm like, "Can't wait to get there. Let's go." And yeah. um, I had a bit of, I had this enormous confidence. Like, I knew the team was really good. Like, the the Blues had had that good good couple of years with Freddie. Had all the all the guys, you know, Cam Cam Murray, Jake Trebojevic, yep. all this new generation that were just full of confidence. Hadn't really lost much in Origin, mm-hmm. and I was like the older guy. Obviously, Jay, Jimmy Maloney was there too. Yep. So. Oh yeah, I forgot Jimmy was the other half. Yeah. yeah. So I had a good relationship. Obviously, and played plenty of footy yep. with Jimmy. So, um, yeah, it was just it was a different feeling being out of it for a couple of years and then going back. But yeah, coming closer to the game, I had those little you know you get those little thoughts coming into your head going you know. I need, I need to win this. Like yeah. I didn't know how it was going to be if I didn't win. Yeah. I, I wasn't up for that. <laughs> I just, I was like, well, we just got to win. And, yeah. uh, it got close there at the end. Oh. Um, but yeah, it just, it makes the, the highlights even better now. Like when I watched that try when Teddy went over, if only you had a pass to me. Uh, mate, if well, you have, a, if you watch I, it back, I was untouched <laughs> on the inside. But, <laughs> but I was looking at you in the reaction and yeah. just, it's just like, I was that happy for you. Thanks, bro. Like just to see. <clears throat> You get that other opportunity. That's not, did you ever think you'd get another opportunity after you didn't, when you got? No, nah, I didn't. And I think, no, I, I didn't. I sort of closed it in, in my own mind as well. So you just sort of shut the door on that chapter. When I went to Newcastle, I was just like, the Roosters days were gone. I've gone to Newcastle. I had a breath of fresh air. It was a new club, new yeah. environment. I wasn't even thinking about rep footy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, obviously, the talk perked up again that year. I was playing really good footy for, for Newey in 2019. And then... Um, it started to come up again. Yeah. So then I'm sort of thinking, how did you feel when it came up again? Yeah, I was a bit, um, 
I was pro- probably a bit of anxiety. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just because there was so much history. And, and you know what's on the line. You know what's on the line. I was yeah. like, if I go and play again <laughs> and I lose, yeah. like it's, you're going through it all again. Yeah. And I was sort of content where I was in my life. Yeah. I'd have played a fair bit. Uh, but I'm so grateful that, as I said before, like without getting too deep, it felt like there was, it was meant to be and it kept coming back. And, and even the way the game ended and the whole experience, I just, I, I'm so grateful for it. Was there any moments in the dressing shed where you just sat there and you just felt like, like I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm speechless. Like I'm happy after the game. Yep. So I remember halftime was a really good uh, thing to talk about. Freddie handled it unbelievable. Um, we're playing, we're down by about two points at halftime. Yep. The way the series had gone, if you can remember, the first two games, the boys like were on fire. We were yep. blowing New South Wales off the park. Um, we were hanging in the game in the in the decider, but we were like at seventy percent. And you could sense, you know, when you're in the game and you can sense everyone's just like, boys, let's just get this together and we'll pump them. Yeah. And there was that feeling. And Freddie just came in and just said, keep playing how you're playing and we'll all be depressed. It was along these lines. Yeah. Keep playing how you're going to play and you'll be, de- you'll all be depressed or pull your heads in and we'll be all happy. Like, but it was hey, all we needed. Very simple. It was all we needed. And it was all, it was how we were all feeling. And I yeah. remember the energy just shift. The boys got up, back slapped everyone and went out there. And then we sort of just took the game to another level until the end. Yeah. I remember the intensity. Uh, you could feel we weren't going to lose. I could feel that. Um, at home. At home. And then, yeah, obviously after the game, it was a similar feeling to the 13. A little bit different because club footy hits different. Yeah. Um, that 13 year with the Roosters. But it was just, yeah, to see my dad, and I get a bit emotional when I say it, but I saw my dad um, after that game and we had this hug. And, and, and when you hug your dad like that, um, it's different to hugging your mum, you know, because yeah. when you see... You know, you, your mum hugs and like, she's proud of you no matter what. Yeah. If I could see my dad, it meant a lot to him. And, um, oh, mate, look at him. Mate, still. look at him now. Like, <laughs> no, it's really good to hear, mate, because not many people know like what, what players go through. Yeah. You know, the ups and downs and the roller coasters. And, mate, what year did you make your origin debut? 2008. You've been holding this on from 2008 to yeah. 2019. That's 11 years. Yeah. And to finally get over, like we said, that hump, yeah. just a sense of accomplishment for yourself. But, to give the people the, the big, I can do it. You know what I mean? Like, and, and we knew you could do it. It's just yeah. unlucky at, in certain moments of the game. And yeah. to finally achieve what you wanted to do, mate, credit to you, brother. No, you hung was, in there, man. It was good. Yeah, mate. It was, <clears throat> it was, it was, um, it was a roller coaster. Origin. I'm so blessed in so many ways to, yeah. to finish your career and the amount of rep footy we played. Um, but as players, as New South Wales players, no one hurt more than us. No. Oh. And, and, and you cop so much criticism. It was even after game one this year and we're, we're working in, <sighs> yes. in the media. So you, we see it first. You're talking about, um, games and you're being critical. It's all part of it. Yeah. Um, but it's, it hurts and there's no one that hurts more than the players. And we've been there, uh, plenty of times and, um, and we hate Queensland. Like oh. at the time, I don't care what anyone says. We don't like them. And, and, the, wor- <laughs> and the worst thing is that they got more passion. Shut up. Like it does my head in Mitchell, mate. We would yeah. like, honestly, you've just had great players. Like, yeah. You know, we're trying to get there. Yeah. Um, but you've seen it now firsthand, how much of the media, like there's just so much, you know, onto the origin everywhere you go. Like as players, we try to say, yeah, we don't read it. We don't buy into it, but you always see it. Yeah. Like, that's why I feel sorry for the kids this day and age that are at that elite rep 40 level all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, you, <coughs> yeah, spoke, no, definitely. you spoke about being in that great mindset when we went to Newcastle. 2017, you find out that the Roosters are going to sign Cooper Cronk. How did you feel when you, did they come and speak to you? Did you feel like, what, what's up for me? Where am I, where does this put me in the, in the system? I, um, yeah, I've spoke about this a few times as well. Um, I was disappointed at the time because of the way it came out. I had a really good year, 17. Yep. We folded out in the major semi, but, um, I had a really good, me and Luke Keery played together that year and we yeah. combined really well. Like it wasn't as if I'd had a dog mm-hmm. year and was injured and so um, to hear the news after that was a bit frustrating and disappointing. Yep. I was pissed off. I can say that I'll be straight Which up honest. And I've be. been that to the people that at the time and then after, but like, yeah, I was pissed off. Um, but I also understood, um, Cooper coming was going to be great for the group. He yep. was an out and out winner, um, a champion halfback, mm-hmm. um, and the influence that he would have had on the, the group and yep. his lifestyle was, was an example probably that I wasn't setting to his level. So I can totally understand Cooper's uh, signing, but obviously as a competitor, I was disappointed. Um, I had an option to stay. Um, and where I was at, 
been a little competitive prick at the time, um, a bit hurt. Um, there was a lot of opportunities to go other clubs, which was flattering. Um, and then obviously, um, uh, the Newcastle was the option I took. Did, so you speak to other options of the clubs. Did firstly, did Cooper Kong ever reach out to you? Yeah. Coops was awesome. Oh yeah. I got a lot of, like, obviously a lot of respect for Coops and, and as a bloke, I've got nothing but respect for him as well. At the time he was probably awkward as well. And he spoke about that. Like it, it would have been hard. Yeah. Like he's obviously the legend he is, he's going to be respected wherever he goes, but, um, you know, I'd been there for a long time. There were a lot of my, a lot of my mates there. So he probably had a bit of, felt a bit awkward yep. and, you know, he was really good. Got straight on the phone, straight up, up front about it. Um, so yeah, there was never anything to do with Coops that yep. had any issues. And, um, yeah, look, I see him now and look, he won two comps there. <laughs> it was a great move. Yeah, it, was it was a great, great move. And club. I always say to people, I've got a funny story when I came back. So I came back before I went to the academy and Robbo. <laughs> Took me through the to the offices. This is about oh, two months ago. Yeah, three months ago, and he's taken me through. And they got a wall with all their ex players and they're all their achievements. <laughs> and I go in and they point at the wall, and it's got mine with the one trophy and the minor premiers. And all my mates have got the three trophies. <laughs> <laughs> so I always laugh for say if I had a state, I might have had a few trophies, even oh. if I was on the on the bench. But um, it is what it is, mate. Nah, one's better than none. And you, you spoke about other clubs. What, what other club? Was there any other clubs that enticed you other than Newcastle? There was a few at the time. So Melbourne, oh, which wow. was a good story. Uh, yeah. Cronulla, Manly. There were some good sides. Uh, the reason I went to Newcastle, to be honest, I was, I've was i been in a system at like the Roosters for a long time. Top top one or two teams in the comp. We either win a comp or we were minor premiers. Um, the pressure was at that that level all the yep. time. Um, so Melbourne was was a good one. I'll go into that in a sec. But but the Knights one, I went up there and it was just a sense of freedom. I felt yeah. it was a different experience. Um, obviously I met up with, with Brownie and, and, and Phil up there and that's Nathan Brown. The Nathan coach. Brown was the coach up there. So I met up with them. Uh, but it was just a, it was a more of a laid back. It's an NRL club, but yep. it was, it was more of a laid back. So sort of like a one town team vibe. Yeah. It was just a different energy. I hadn't been out of Sydney all my life. Yep. Um, the club was rebuilding. Um, it was, a, it was just going to be a different experience. It was just something that gave me the most freedom at the time. So yep. that's why I made that choice. And, and it talked to us about the, the story with Melbourne. Yeah. The Melbourne one. So just after it all sort of happened, um, Cam Smith, I got a message from Cam oh. Smith. I know he was in the Australian team. Geez, your phone time. number gets around a bit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a message from, from Smitty. Um, and he said, oh, it's, but at that time there was, you know, you just finished, yep. you're working out what you want to do. There's a sense of freedom in it. Um, once you sort of make that choice yep. and yeah, to get the message from Cam Smith. So I had a good chat with him for, you know, 20 minutes on the phone. He spoke about how, how he's really keen to get me down there. Um, he wants to play with me, like all this positive stuff. So it was a genuine opportunity. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but what happened was there was op things with the top 30 squad. Yep. There was halves there at the time. Um, so it just, it sort of didn't work out. I would have gone there for less money. Yeah. Uh, but it just, it was, it was a bit. Well, they had like Munster and Brady Croft. Well, Munster was keen as well. So I'd oh. had a bit of a chat with, with, with him after. And so it would have been, a, it would have been a nice little combination there with, with Munster and, and Cam Smith, Billy Slade. I do pinch myself a bit with that yep. and how life would have gone a different direction. Um, but you know, there's no doubt I would have been a pretty better player playing off Cam Smith and, and then, but, um, where? And, and talk to us about Newcastle. How was your time up there? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed Newy. The first couple of years, as I said before, it was a sense of freedom. Yep. Um, it was a completely different thing that I was used to. I played linked up with Kalen Ponga, obviously, the first year. And uh, KP was the, the, the little superstar that was coming through. And we, yep. we combined really well. The good thing with Brownie that year, Brownie played a, like an all-out attacking style. Yep. Um, I was used to a really defensive style at the Roosters, you know, really professional long game mentality and, and building pressure where, where Brownie was just encourages just to play. Yep. Caleb won the Dally M that first year. And I think I finished third. Oh, wow. So I had a really big third or fourth or something like that, but I had a really good year yep. uh, individually and we we're playing off of, off the back foot a lot. Um, but we were encouraged to play. So it was yep. like, a, it was something new and it was exciting again for someone who I've been playing for 12 years. So I really enjoyed it. And then obviously the year after, we had a bit of success, uh, mate, mate played back into origin and yep. so, yeah, it was, <clears throat> we made the eight twice when I was there and, um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed Newcastle. Yeah. It was really good and, uh, made plenty of good friends away from footy as well up there. At, I, I still close, hold close to my heart. So talk to us about the move to Catlin's Dragons. Yep. Like just, was that, 
like obviously you, you, you find out you're going to move from Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Was Catlin's the only sort of side or was there any other interest? No, nah, so I was still contracted at Newcastle for one more year. Yep. Um, I had a few dramas off the field. Um, so I, I, Jimmy Maloney reached out to me when we were in COVID. So yep. we were in COVID in, in Queensland. Um, Where were you? at the Gold Coast? Or? We were in Sunny Coast. Oh, beautiful, yeah. Um, so I was just sort of, I had one more year. To be honest, the body was feeling a bit fatigued. Yep. Um, yeah, I was just in a bit of a up and down weird place. Yeah, well, COVID, sort of, and COVID was a weird time as well. Yeah, yeah. So it was a bit of a, so things happen for a reason. And I got a call from Steve Mack. Uh, Steve McNamara, the coach, who I had a relationship with at the Roosters. Oh, okay. Jimmy Maloney just retired. Uh, he, he was saying he was finishing at the end of the year. Yep. Jimmy, Sammy Moe, all the old boys that I'd played with yeah. were all there. And I was getting phone calls and, and seeing if I was interested. Um, at first, I was like, when, you, when you're living here all your life and you've played only NRL, you know, you don't really think about Super League yeah. too much. Well, I wasn't anyway at that time. Um, and it seemed like such a big move going to France. Well, yep. you know, it was, it was like, it seemed crazy at the time. Um, but yeah, look, the longer I, I sat on it and got through the back end of the year, um, got away from footy for a few weeks and thought, you know, a change would probably be the best thing. Yep. Um, spoke to a few close mates and they were like, mate, go over and enjoy it. Get out of the bubble. And yeah, I'm so glad I did it. Love my time there. I've spoke about it plenty of times. It was life changing for me. Um, just the whole move. The first year you're still sort of stuck in Australian ways a little bit, you're sort of missing family and like any big move, it's, it's sort of, it doesn't feel, um, uh, like it doesn't feel natural at yep. the start. You're just there to play footy. But the second year I met my partner and, um, experienced plenty of Europe and made some big changes. So it's, it was life changing for me. What well, what was the difference with the footy to super league to NRL? Um, week to week, the standards nowhere near as hard yeah. as NRL. The top teams over there play a really strong defensive style of footy. Yeah. Um, the St. Helens and Wigan, they really squeeze you and their wrestle's really good. So they would sort of pass for NRL standard? Yeah, definitely, yep. yeah. It's just the thing over there, you play so many games. You play, if you play Challenge Cup final and then Grand Final in the regular season, you're playing like 32 games. Wow, really? There was a period there, the first year I played there, where they do a, it's like a school, uh, it's a public holiday weekend yep. sort of thing. It might be Easter weekend. Yeah. But you're playing like five games in, in like 11, 12 days. No way. So you, how'd yeah, the rig feel there? I just buckled. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, that, that sort of stuff. And some of those games were the lower teams that were yep. playing. So it's not as if the, the game's like crazy hard physically, it's still football yep. and you've got to compete and you're playing tough and there's good players, but it's not an NRL standard every week, yep. but the amount of games you're playing with the travel, um, you've got to be resilient. Yep. Um, and then there's, and the, the, the conditions early in the year, you're playing a lot of games in the wet as well. Yep. So it's wet weather, you know, slippery ball, um, playing at a angry St. Helens stadium when they're all against you. Like it's, 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 it's there's all different, um, experiences that you don't get in the NRL, yep. but I loved it. The style of footy is really good. And the best players that play over there, probably in the, in the, in the fullback and halves position or even outside backs, the guys have got really good speed. Yep. It's a bit more of an open style and yep. you know, guys like Jai Field, like he's, him, Bevan French. Yeah. Like these guys. Have he's this. got man of steel, didn't he? Bevan no, French he's unbelievable last year. over there. The NRL club's looking out for a, a good five eight, a great five. You reckon eight. he's learned his trade, mate? He's unbelievable over there. Um, Jai feels the same, like just totally, just speed, and they're just doing really crazy stuff, kicking on the second tackle, and so yeah, like it's and you play with so many good players. Some of the you know guys I played with, you know, Sammy Tompkins, oh Mike, yes, Michael McAlor, my good mate that I played with over there that I really followed. Um, yeah, they're all great players from Wigan, and yep. They would have great in our Did you play Busquets? Busquets, yeah, he's a guard. Yeah. Benny Garcia, who was yeah. our captain. Yep. He's, the French boys that I played with, uh, there's some really quality players there. Yeah. Some of those boys would have, if they had got opportunities to come out here earlier, I think they would have would oh. had really good NRL careers. Yep. Uh, it's just difficult, especially for the Frenchies. Um, you know, by the time you get over to a top 30 and then the age you come over at, I think it can affect their NRL opportunities. But, you know, individually, I know Benny Garcia, our captain, yeah. uh, Archer Morgs, one of the young fullbacks there. He's, he's got plenty of talent. Um, so there's, yeah, there's a real, there's a real good group of, of, of players there in France. How did you go with the language barrier when you first moved to France? 
On the best of times, you struggle to speak English, but yeah, well, that's the problem. <laughs> well, my, as I said, I said my partner's French, so yep. I live with two Frenchies in in Australia uh, with her her best mates over do, here. Do, do they still speak French over here? Yeah, they speak French, Arabic, everything. <laughs> so I got no chance. So, so do you understand it at all? Have you learnt? Have you learnt much? No, I do. I can speak a little bit. Um, the boys, whoever listening to this, that know me will be bagging me, I reckon. But um, Liam, yeah, yeah, Liam Roach. I can speak a little bit. I'm, I'm working hard on it. Yeah, obviously with the, with the, with the, with the missus family, um, it is important. I just struggle to pick it up. But how was the first year you go over there? We don't have the new missus. Like, how did you yep. go? It's um the thing is that it's it's easier to adapt is because the coach speaks English like Steve Mack yep. speaks English yep. majority of the time he speaks a little bit of French um but most of the time and all the Frenchies speak English so it's yep. kind of funny when you go over there really you got you're playing in a French team and you're forcing the the French boys to speak English doesn't really make sense unbelievable yeah so a lot of them a lot of the uh, the, the conversation and because we got a lot of English boys in the team yep so there's about eight English boys Australians and then the Frenchies so. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of English spoken, but mate, I'm going to get there. Give me a year. You'll be right. You'll be right. Give me a year. Plenty of time to learn now. <laughs> One thing I'd love to know, like, you know, in Australia, right? So we have a good game, yeah. you know, we might go have a couple of beers with the boys. How do they like celebrate? How's the camaraderie work over there? Do you just go for coffee or do you have wine and a couple of baguettes? How's nah, it work the over there? the boys love a beer there. Yeah. Um, it was really good. This, the, the second year, really, especially, uh, we had a really close knit group. Yep. Um, there's obviously culture differences. Um, yeah, you know, obviously it's a French club and the French boys are, are proud and it's, 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 they're from there. It's their team. Yep. Um, but they really, they, they respect all the, the expats that come, but I had a really good relationship, uh, with the French boys and the success you have there is how close the team is. Yep. Um, but obviously Steve Mack's done a really good job at recruiting the right type of people that, yep. that want to be there. And, um, yeah, we had, especially the year we made the grand final, we had a really good crew. Everyone was, was close and, yep. and, and still now I've got some. Some of my really good friends from there that are the French boys um, that I still keep in, in touch with and, and closely. Was it like um, like first class over there? Or was it was like a second job for some people, like within we, the team. Yeah, no, nah, it's all full time. Full time, yeah. Um, the wages probably vary a little bit. Yep. But um, no, it's 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 Super League's the same as the NRL system. There's probably, there's not as much ga money in the game. Yep. Um, but the but the the structure's all the same. It's professional. Um. You got your top thirty squad. Yep. Um, so yeah, everything's pretty. It replicates pretty similar to to NRL. And then it's like off the field, right? Like we both know, like the headlines you've been in for. Yeah. The, 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 what about the lessons you've learned from that? Like, you know, you've yep. been in your own dramas. You know, now you're you're sober. You're what 12, 12 months sober. Yeah, a bit bit over now. Bit over eighteen months. Yeah. Oh, that's, mate, congratulations. That's Thank outstanding. You, yeah. Um, like, what are the lessons you learned and, and things you could pass on to young blokes? Yeah. I... It's funny when you, when you get older and you've got an older, wiser head, you, you'd like to pick the, change a lot of things that you went through. Yep. Um, my things were never malicious. Like, I think for me, I was just in this pattern where I wish I stopped the pattern earlier. Yep. If I had, if, if I had my time again, or if I had, a, could have changed something instead of just picking out different instant, you know, like this, the drama here or the, the dog thing or. Like they all came the, off the back of... But honestly, the, the dog thing, they made it sound like you dead set nearly killed somebody. Yeah, but look, at, at the same time, there was times then when I, I turned to alcohol um, and it was to escape yeah. and I and I turned into someone that I, I don't really respect. Mm -hmm. You know, the way I acted in those videos or different things I've done in my life in relationships as an older head and hopefully a better person now, I don't respect things I did. Yeah. But at that time, that was, that was the, that was the things I was doing. Um, and I think all of us can look back on our life and, and, and change different things. But, um, yeah, look, it was, I've said it heaps of times now and spoke about alcohol and, and changes. Um, there's no doubt for me, it gives me more clarity. Um, for me, alcohol got in the way of a lot of my moods and, um, yeah, ruined relationships and, um, consistency in footy at yeah. different times. Um, but at the same time, there was plenty of great times on, on drinking with, with drinking and partying. That's a good time with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's hard. It's, it's always, I like talking about it because I've obviously made some changes and I think um, it's good that you can still talk about it, but know that you don't want to do it. Yeah. And that's a good lesson for some sort of people. And yeah, you know that you've had some bad mistakes doing it, Yeah, but you know how to get through it now. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest thing with any growth is to be able to identify where you're going wrong. Yep. Um, and some people never get that right, do they? Yeah, nah. So I think, yeah, I'm in a position now where I can 
hopefully try and um, give back. Me and Toddy have, are working on a on a business at the moment. Oh, uh, yep. We spoke about that around helping out with kids and in, in schools, um, some juvie kids, and yep. Um, we're working on that at the moment. That'll be re- really rewarding, I think, to give back a bit of advice and how to deal with different anxieties yep. and pressures. So I'm I'm excited about that, and that's where my path's going at the moment. And I'm grateful for footy, but I'm looking forward to what's ahead. Well, that was my next sort of question. What's life going to be like for Mitchell away from the footy side of things, away from that junior development? Are you, are you just going to be happy with doing that, or are you going to obviously the the juvie sort of stuff? That sounds pretty good. Yeah, well, the stuff with the with the kids or giving back. Um, how how did you come up, rewarding? How did you come up with that concept? Like, I had a relationship with a with a counsellor. She's an older lady yep. um, who I had a really good friendship with. Um, spoke to her about a few things over the years and. Um, away from that, we just sort of, we're always connected. She's, yep. she's a really smart woman. She's got a lot of different clinics, um, got a lot of businesses and she does a lot of good stuff for the community and the stuff with around juvies and yep. stuff as well. So we always talked about maybe connecting and, mm-hmm. and, and sort of, uh, linking up in that way. Um, and obviously Toddy has been on a similar journey and he's done a lot of stuff with, with kids, yep. um, the last couple of years and he's doing lots of good stuff off the drink. So. Yeah, it sort of just feels right for us to, to connect and try and give back in that in that way. So um, looking forward to that if, if, if that gets up and running. I'm sure it will, mate. Two great ambassadors for it. Um, retirement. Are you are you happy with with retiring now? Like, are you, are you, are you, do you think it's done? There's no more itch? No, nah, I definitely don't have the itch. But I think it's, it's interesting because when you retire, you go through different moods. Yeah. And I've got a lot of sympathy for all the boys that I know have gone through tough times when yep. they've retired. Um, <clears throat> I've obviously made some changes off the drink and I know that was probably the best place to give me clarity yep. in transition. But um, I can understand why a lot of players, and it's great that the NRL has got stuff in place now to support. It's probably the best place the game's ever been in, been in to support players uh, in transition. And I'm one of the lucky ones. Yeah. And I'm very grateful for that, that I've be, getting opportunities to... Um, to try and see, to move forward. Um, but you know, there's plenty of guys that finish and, 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 and lack a bit of direction. And I think it's, you take out something that's been so important to you for a long yeah. time. It does leave a hole. And I'm experiencing that at times myself. Um, you know, your training standards aren't as consistent. Yep. Um, you're not, you're never going to, all the stuff we spoke about before about origin and winning grand finals, you're never going to replicate even just club footy. When you're week to week, you're going out there with your mates, and you're challenging yourself. You've got yep. accountability all the time. Um, I, and I think that's the thing you, you're going to miss. And there's obviously other ways in ways in life that will give you that kind of purpose. But yep. it does take time. I think transition, uh, and speaking to a lot of older players, it, it, it can take time. But um, yeah, I think like anything, you, you've got to replace the purpose. And 100%. I'm, I'm sure that takes a bit of time. But like I said, I'm pretty grateful that I've been blessed with a few opportunities so yep. far. I want to I want to say like read you something here. Sydney Roosters two hundred thirty eight games. Newcastle Knights seventy one. Catlins Dragons forty one. New South Wales City three games. New South Wales Origin nineteen. Prime Ministers thirteen two games. And NRL All Stars one. What do you think about that? <laughs> Seriously, like that is yeah. mate. Honestly, you chuck in a Premiership. You chuck in Origin series. That's one hell of a career, mate. Three hundred nine NRL games. Three hundred nine, and then. Mate, you're in the part of the 300 club. Like, there's what 51 of them now yep. that's ever played in a row, mate. That is a, a remarkable career. Mate, you should be really proud of yourself. Thanks, Woodsy. No, I appreciate it, man. And um, always love playing with you as well. And do you, but do you ever reflect and think about what you've done? Like, <clears throat> mate, it's such a, mm. mate, it's such a great career. I think um, it's funny when you're talking about this, like healing and 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 transition, and it's good to talk about and and getting off the drink. I, I think I've because I've got a lot more time on my hands at the moment. Yeah. Um, you sort of reflect and you do a lot of podcasting and the triple M yep. uh, podcast sort of stuff. And you're talking a lot about yourself and yeah. reflecting. Um, and it, I think as a player and as a competitor, and you'll probably go through this yourself, it's really hard to let go of, of disappointments in your yep. career or moments you wish you had again. Yep. So it's really hard to appreciate all the effort that you put in until you you can let it go. Yeah. It's hard to explain it, but, um, so I'm sort of going through that a bit at the moment, but yeah, I'm very grateful and, pl- and proud of, of the career I had and the opportunities yep. and the people I've met. And I think to play NRL for a long time, let alone two years, it, it takes so much effort and, and commitment and desire. And, um, 
yeah, that's that's what I'm probably grateful for the most. Oh, you showed a lot of commitment and desire, mate, over the time. Got one last question. Would you change anything in your journey that you've done to where you are now? I don't know. I'm always weird with this because I'm like, it always leads to something. <laughs> but um, what would I change? I don't think I'd change anything. Beautiful. I don't, I, should, I, I don't reckon I would. Nor should you. I don't reckon I would. Mate, you've learned lessons. You, yeah. You've won comps. I would change things. Like if I could say I would have changed that. But at but the it, time, it, I, I never did anything that didn't feel right at the time. Can I, Good or bad. You, <laughs> Good just, or bad. The only thing is you probably hurt yourself. <clears throat> yeah. And what you've done is you've learned what not to do. Yeah. And that's a great lesson for people listening and for young blokes coming through the grave. Yeah. I just think, to be honest, if I was, you know, I wish I probably jerried to maybe the drink a bit earlier. I've said that a few times yep. now. Um, yeah, I'd probably just, I, all I could say if I was giving on one bit of advice, while you're playing, just give it everything you got and leave no stone unturned because, and if that's taking out alcohol or that's sacrificing a certain part of your life that you don't want to let go of, just put it all aside while you're playing, give it everything you got because when it's finished, it's finished and you've got a long life ahead of you after. Yeah. Uh, but while you're playing, just leave no stone unturned. I know in my heart as a competitor and training-wise, I, I didn't. I didn't leave any stone unturned. I gave everything I got, so I'm, I don't have any regrets around that. Mate, that is outstanding, mate. Thank you so much, <laughs> Pearcey, for joining Woodsy's Club Tour. Good on you, brother. Legend, brother. Thank you.